John chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet he did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting where the, angel, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying. One at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. She said, Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. May the Lord richly bless this reading of his holy word, God's holy word. May it be life changing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The title of the message today is Resurrection. The resurrection of Jesus changes everything. You know, big words get thrown around a lot. I'm not ashamed to say that. Sometimes I, I need to look them up. Take, for example, resurrection. What does resurrection mean? Well, it said revitalization. So I looked that up too. The action of giving something life in vitality. Synonyms, that's another fancy word for other similar words. Resurrection is like an awakening, a resuscitation, rejuvenation, recreation. You look up the dictionary, the word resurrection literally means Jesus Christ rising from the dead. 
The resurrection of Jesus Christ means that believers in Christ are justified before God. He was delivered over to death for our sin and was raised to life for our justification. Romans 4.25 Justification means to be put right with. It means to be put right with God. You and me. Jesus makes us right with God. Even though we can be all wrong. Jesus makes us right with God. Resurrection. God the Father has raised Jesus. Everything about Jesus is validated. What he's done for us, his teachings, and his call on each of our lives and his special call on each of our lives. So what does that mean? Exactly, how does that affect me? How does that affect you? What does this mean? What does this mean for each of us? Number one, Jesus is called the second Adam. Jesus restores what was lost by the first Adam. The first Adam tried to be like God. Want to be like God, right? That's why they ate the fruit. The second Adam, Jesus, <clears throat> becomes human for us. He embraces being human. Turn these loaves into bread. Turn these rocks into bread. Man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Worship me, I'll give you the whole shooting match. The whole, the whole shooting match. Worship the Lord your God and serve only Him. Hey, jump! God will catch you. Worship. Thou shalt not put the Lord thy God to the test. Jesus chose to be one of us. Chose to be human. For in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. That's what this means. You know, something significant happened on earth here 50 years ago. April 17, 1972. Anybody know what it was? April 17, 1972. No guesses? It was the first time in the Boston Marathon that women were allowed to run. They had snuck in a couple of times. They had fought their way in. But 1972 was the first time they were allowed to participate. A lot of long story about why that was. But, oh gosh, her name, Nina Kusick won, and all eight women who participated finished the 26.2 mile course. Now this was a game changer. In fact, they weren't even in the game. They were admitted into something they had been excluded from. Kind of like what Jesus has done for us. It's more than a game changer for us. It's we are admitted into a new relationship with God. Jesus has forgiven our sins, past, present, and future, and given us the opportunity to be born from above. To have something going on this way. Nicodemus came to Jesus. He was this great teacher. Jesus said, no, unless a man is born from above, unless a man, woman, is born from above, they cannot see the kingdom of God. 
Number two today. Today's passage. A brother pastor said this about John 2016. What's John 2016? Jesus said to her, Mary. Mary. That's the shortest sermon Jesus ever preached. He just said her name. Amen. Spurgeon said Jesus can preach a perfect sermon in one word. Says her name. This was a very emotional time for Mary. She had been at the crucifixion. What occurred there was horrendous. It can't be overstated or over dramatized. What our Lord went through. And then, you know, they begged the body, the, the body from Pilate, and they carried him and his body was mutilated. He, he was he was dead. And they they took him to the tomb. Speaking of marathons, it was like Mary Magdalene was in mile 20. You know, marathon's 26.2 miles. She was in mile 20. And they say you hit a wall sometimes in your marathon, and she was just she was she was out of gas. She was just going to the tomb to, to take care of business, take care of anointing him. And she hears her name Mary. And then she turns to him and says, Rabboni, which means teacher. Talk about a game changer. This changes everything. is now in the presence and power of the resurrected Jesus. Can you relate to life being a mess? Let me repeat that. Can you relate to life being a mess? Hard? Not being able to see a way through? God will make a way where there seems to be no way. Just think about that for a moment. When there seems to be no way, or perhaps where the way is difficult. These have been tough times. COVID, the war, Ukraine, grief, loss, depression, angst, fill in the blank. These are tough times. I don't know anybody we know I would say has it easy. Very difficult. You know what would be the really coolest thing that could happen in the midst of this Easter and resurrection? If you could hear Jesus just gently say your name. Just hear the Lord say your name. What a fantastic message that is. You know, I, I, one of this quote just jumped out at me. Jesus doesn't reveal himself to Mary by telling her who he was, but by telling her who she was to him. When Jesus said Mary's name, it was, it was with love and affection. It's the shortest sermon in the Bible. Mary. And Mary speaks back to Jesus. She calls him teacher. You know, teachers teach us. And they lead us and guide us. But even before we're ready to hear the teaching, you just need to feel the love. This morning, wherever you are in your marathon of faith development, maybe you haven't even started, pray you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. May you hear your name, feel the hug, and say yes to Jesus. <clears throat> Jesus is alive and at work in the world. He 
calls our names and has a plan for each of our lives. Now, I need to review this just for me sometimes. Admit. Simple as the ABCs, admit. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Yeah, that's me. That's you. B, believe. God so loved the world, He gave His one and only Son, so that whosoever believes on Him shall not perish, but have eternal life. He believed. C, call upon His name. Everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans 10, 13. In New York City, if a patrolman, patrolman says 10, 13, that means I need assistance. And everybody who hears that or sees that on the computer now will drop everything to go and assist their fellow police officer in need. You want to see drama, have a police officer say 1013, 1013. Well, we got something even more powerful than that. The resurrection changes everything. Everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Lord, help me. Indeed, decide. Bible says now is the day of salvation. Anybody want that deal? I want that deal. Anybody else want it? Lift your hand. I want that deal. I want that. That's born from above. Why wouldn't you lift your hand? I want that. Don't you? Amen. That's born again. Born from above. You now got something new going. You've got a relationship with God. You've got a relationship with Jesus Christ. And he wants to teach you. And show you the way. So three. What may Jesus be teaching you today? What may Jesus be <coughs> teaching me today? The Lord did a lot of praying in his life. He prayed on the cross. Father, in your hands I commend my spirit. Psalm 31.5. We cannot pray better than when we pray the words of Scripture. I lift up my eyes unto the hills, whence cometh my help. I lift my eyes to the hills, whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. You can't drop a name bigger than the name of Jesus. Persistent, calling upon the Lord, breaks through every stronghold of the devil. For nothing is impossible with God. I shared this in the, in the letter. My wife's beautiful saying that she put up. Faith makes things possible, not easy. John 10.10, 10, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Jesus sends Mary on a mission to share the good news of his rising. Jesus gives to all his followers a mission, if we listen and pay attention. I give you a new commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. That's even more than the golden rule. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. This is the titanium rule. Love one another as I have loved you. Oh, that commandment. What will living that commandment be like in your life and mine? I came across the following story in one of my preaching resources. Reverend Carla Pratt Keys, a sermon for every Sunday. It's one of my preaching resources. I always look up things as I prepare a message. You know, our, our following Jesus is to occur in our everyday lives as we seek to put everything under the cross, I mean everything, and seek the love of the Lord in life. You know, in a Christian church, the Christian flag is always on the right, the U.S. flag is on the left. That's done for one reason. God is first. So I don't care who you vote for. Jesus is first in your life. He's supposed to be anyway. Amen? Amen. Across this story and it, it moved me. It's a story from a guy named Brian Stevenson who wrote a book called Just Mercy. 
which chronicles his life working with black men on death row. He was giving a talk and told a story connected to a memorial that's part of the Legacy Museum in Montgomery, Alabama, a beautiful museum. The memorial is a part of the museum and features jars of soil from places black people were lynched. Their bodies never received the proper burial. But the soil contains their sweat and blood, as well as the tears of people who were segregated and humiliated in various times in U.S. history. Stephen tells a story about a middle-aged black woman who had gone to collect soil in a very remote location. When she got there, she felt very anxious. It was a dirty road, it was the middle of nowhere. She found the place where the lynching had taken place, took her jar to the spot, and began to dig up the soil. All of a sudden, a truck drove by. Big white guy staring at her from the cab. A bit down the road, the truck slowed, stopped, turned around, and drove back. The man parked his truck and walked toward her. Now, she was really scared. What are you doing, he asked. She was thinking, I'll just tell him I'm here to gather some dirt for a garden. You know, just get some dirt from my garden. But something got a hold of her. She said, I'm digging soil because this is where a black man was lynched in 1937 and I'm going to honor his life today. The man saw a paper on the ground near the woman. He said, does this paper talk about the lynching? Could I read it? And he did. Then he shocked her by saying, excuse me, ma'am, would it be all right if I helped you? He got down on his knees next to her. She offered him the implement to dig the soil. He said, no, I'll just use my hands. And he started to dig the earth with his hands. His hands became black with soil. There was something about his conviction while he was, while he was digging that moved the woman, and a tear rolled down her face. He saw it and said, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm upsetting you. She said, no, no, you're blessing me. The man's digging it slowed, and she realized he was crying too. She asked if he was all right. He said, no, ma'am, I'm just worried. It might have been my grandfather that helped lynch this man. They sat together, just weeping. Then they finished filling the jar with soil. The man said, I'd like to take a picture of you holding the jar. She said the same. So they took pictures of one another. Then the man followed her back to the museum and they delivered the soil together at the Legacy Museum. Stories like this testify to me that no matter what it is, God can transform. God can redeem. Whatever the mess, the hurt, the heartache, even when there seems to be no way, Mary was going to find, was going, she was going to a dead body and found a risen Lord who knew her name and had a plan for her life. The resurrection of Jesus changes everything. We are invited to be a part of the resurrection, the new life given to the risen Christ. Jesus Christ is alive and at work in the world. He calls our name and has a plan for each of our lives. What 
will that look like in your life as you hear Jesus say your name? What will that look in your life? What will God's plan, what will God's plan look like in your life when you hear the Lord say your name? The resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ changes everything. May it change what needs to be changed. Amen? Amen. You know, Adam Hamilton, we did a study on the Lord's Prayer, and he has a line which he says when he talks about the gospel. He says, I'm not only believing it, I'm counting on it. Let's pray. Lord, we love you and we need you. Have your hand upon us. May we hear you in our heart of hearts, in your still small voice, in our inner sanctum, in our prayer closet, on the road where you meet us. May we hear you say our name like you said Mary's name. May you lead us in the way we should go. It's in your name we pray. All God's people said. Amen. Amen.